Lili, I want to ask you, what is the cognitive behavioral functional trajectory um, that's due to normal aging as we understand it, and how is that different in individuals with Alzheimer's disease? Sure. So first and foremost, there are certainly mild declines that come along with nor normal aging, but they are just that in nature. They're mild. Um, and there can be subtle changes in speed or uh, one's ability or capacity to learn. So maybe you're not learning as much information um, or maybe having a little bit of difficulty retrieving that information. Um, but you're not losing that information and you're not having a drastic decline um, in your thinking. Um, I think you're, you're not forgetting events, major events, um, or having trouble caring for yourself, for example. Um, I think there's a common misconception that as we get older, um, you know, we're going to have a drastic decline in memory and thinking overall, but in reality, changes should be pretty subtle. And that's in contrast to something like Alzheimer's disease, which typically um, you know, one would have difficulty holding on to information and would be losing information um, and eventually uh, have declines to the point where they would have difficulty caring for themselves. Um, but oftentimes I'll be speaking to a patient or a family member and um, a lot gets attributed to, to um, older age in that, oh, well, you know, they, they can't remember anything, but they're just, they're just old. But, and, and that's not actually the case. That's actually pathological aging um, as opposed to normal aging. Okay. Uh, are there other, other than memory, uh, other functions that uh, can be disrupted in Alzheimer's disease as, as symptoms? I, we'll get into it a little bit more later on, but um, just as a, as a bullet. Um, of course, <clears throat> of course. So memory oftentimes is kind of the typical uh, first symptom, but uh, people oftentimes have changes in, you know, trouble with wor word finding and trouble coming up with the right word, um, which can be seen in normal aging, but not to the extent that you would expect in um, an Alzheimer's disease process. And we'll talk about atypical um, presentations of Alzheimer's disease a little bit later. Years earlier, when I was learning about about these things, um, there was a contrast made between um, sort of um, fluid intelligence, uh, which is that processing ability of learning new things quickly, manipulating ideas, and 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 processing them, and crystallized intelligence, which is you know our experiences and wisdom and um, those things that tend to be much more crystallized. Sure. So something like uh, um, your vocabulary or things like that tend to be more crystallized and less um, uh, vulnerable to change over time. And um, whereas uh, different areas of functioning like memory are a little bit more susceptible. So is that is that one of the reasons, for example, that individuals with Alzheimer's disease can can go many years before being detected because they have language skills in some ways that are preserved much more or social skills and yes. yet they can have incredible difficulties with the kinds of functioning in their own home and, and in memory. Yes, absolutely. And I can go unmask, uh, get, get unmasked later on. It, it helps clinically too because it gives uh, individuals some strengths that they can really build upon. We get very focused on their deficits but we also have to keep in mind that there might be social skills or vocabulary or some of these more crystallized areas that can really uh, make all the difference in terms of keeping someone functional and engaged socially. Absolutely. 